Today is Saturday, April 14th, 2012, and we are interviewing Johnny Baylark at Springfield, Illinois. Johnny, for the record, my name is Cheryl Walker, and Johnny, for the record, could you state the war, what war and branch of service you served in? Uh, yes. Uh my name is Johnny Baylock Jr. and I uh, enlisted in the U.S. Marine Corps in 1967. I served in Vietnam for 11 and a half months. Uh, and as far as being locations, uh, being on Fleet Marine Force, we was just off, in and off of the ship. So we was on just about all over Vietnam at one point. So just to pinpoint, and I really just can't say one particular area. Uh, a lot of these areas I intentionally deleted out of my memory bank because it wasn't a real nice picture. But uh, for the ones I did, I can uh, talk about some of those. Okay. What was your rank? Uh, my rank was E4. When I retired, I was E4. What was your job in assignment? My job, I was a I was a scout sniper, but I really didn't do a lot of sniping work. I was more so uh, assigned to the rear, uh, and my job, part of my job was when we was uh, located around the river banks, rivers, uh, my job was to uh, take a box of ammunition up there and whatever's coming up under the bridge, coming down the river, is to make sure that if it's wood, I'll make it like two picks at the end by the time it passed under it. So my job was partially uh, to just maintain what was in that area of the to maintain any, and destroy anything that coming down the river so that it wouldn't be any harm or any explosion up under the bridge. And can you remember any of your medals or citations that you received? I received two bronze, uh, two purple hearts, a bronze, bronze star, our Vietnam Service Medal, uh, Navy Achievement Medal, uh, and a few more I just can't remember. Is it unusual to receive two Purple Hearts? No. Uh, each time you receive a Purple Heart, that means that's each time that you was injured in war. So I was injured twice as a result, so I ended up having two Purple Hearts. Some guys may have five or six because they was steady, you know, send back to the rear, they get hurt, and they go back and they get hurt again. So it just depends on how many times you got hurt in the, via, in the war zone, I'll say. Can you share any battle plans that you were involved in? I, if I can remember, I served our, well, I about 55 night ambush that I was had to take out a fire team. Uh, I was in charge of the fire team at times. Uh, myself and four other guys would go out to a certain area of our perimeters and uh, we set up camp for that area and then so if we see any Vietnamese or uh, Viet Cong coming through we would have to, before I could shoot or anyone could shoot, we have to call back and get permission. And most time when we call back they said don't shoot. So. If we did have to shoot, then we mean we had to really get back to our area. Tell us about staying in touch with your family. Family is the most important thing when you're in military service, not only in the war zone, but in the military service altogether. My uh, family is very close. I have five sisters and three other brothers, and uh, my mother and father was alive during the time, and we were very close. Uh, writing letters practically every day. Uh, they was writing letters also to me, sending care packages and all that. That which made things a little easier. How long did it take to get these care packages and letters? Uh, it was sometimes takes uh, a couple of weeks, a week sometimes, maybe, uh, sometimes it might be even longer. It just depends on what process they have to go through. Did everybody share their care packages with each other? Yes, we did. The care package that we received, uh, sometimes if it was, it was food, it was kind of like old, but uh, being in the bush and not able to get real food sometimes, that was still good. Talk about the food that 
you had? Was it usually rations that you had if you were? <coughs> when we were in the, uh, we'll say out, out in the bush, yeah, we usually had our sea rations. And the sea ration really don't compare to the regular food that you will normally get. Sea ration is, uh, everything is packed in a can. So if you're looking at a can of lima beans, that's a, in a can. Uh, everything just about came in a can. Uh, bread came in a can. Uh, so it was a little difficult, but it was good. We made do. And then a lot of times when we didn't really have a lot of food, we would take our helmet liner, make a little hole in the ground, use a little C4 for fire, and we would cook what we call a stew. And that's whatever everybody had left, we just all dumping off in that one container. And that was considered our meal. Interesting. Did you have plenty of supplies besides food? Uh, yes, when you say in supplies, you mean like uh, uh, clothing, ammo? Mm -hmm. Yes, we did. We had plenty of that. Did you do or have anything special for good luck with you? I believe in God. So I prayed a lot. I uh, stayed in contact with my pastor that uh, the, the church I used to go to. And um, a lot of guys, we always prayed. In Vietnam or in any war, if you don't have God on your side, uh, you're kind of lost because you don't really have anything really to look forward to. I'm going to say for myself. My story is different because a lot of things I encountered was kind of different from what other guys did. So I can only tell you my part of it. And I believed in God, and today I still believe in God, and I still serve God. Did what or how did you entertain yourself? Entertain, well, back in the, if we back in the rear, we played a lot of cards, we played games. Uh, we challenge guys, we do a lot of little things just to keep your mind occupied. Uh, arm wrestling, uh, if it's in the daytime, if we had a big enough area, we play a little football, a little basketball, listen to music, and share stories, show pictures of our loved ones, and special girlfriends and all that, so. I didn't have any children before I went into service, so I didn't have any pictures to show of uh, my kids, so. Were there any entertainers that came out to see you? We've had, uh, I remember seeing Bob Hope um, in the USO shows. Uh, a lot of times when you're in the rear, you can see those type of things, but sometimes when you, most of the time, we, when you're out in the bush, you might be out there two or three weeks, and you don't see anything then, but when you're in the rear, you have opportunity to go to shows and uh, other entertainers that come to be, a, to be a part to entertain us, to show us that they care. So. What entertainers do you, did you remember seeing? I can't remember any, a lot of them, but uh, the names I can remember, we had quite a few, but the names, I just can't remember some of them. Okay. But I do remember Bob Pope, though, so. Did you get any leaves when you were over there? Yes. Sorry. What I did you? had the opportunity to give R&R &R to uh, Thailand and uh, Bangkok, Thailand, really. And it was really nice. I mean, it was just like a vacation. Uh, you didn't have to worry about your backpack. You didn't have to worry about all your gear or your guns and all that. So it was a vacation. That's why they call it R&R. &R. Did you, do you recall any particular humorous or unusual event? Well, the un unusual, I guess that's when you're, you're dodging bullets. Uh, maybe it's not unusual, but it's, uh, it's an encounter that you will never forget. Uh, especially when you're not, if you're in a firefight and you're almost about to be overran, and you don't know if you're going to live the next half a second or not. Uh, those are type of things. Uh, it's, I guess, not unusual in a war zone because this is what you expect. But uh, 
Thank God I'm still here today to say that. Did you keep a personal diary? No. Do you recall the day your service ended? Yes. What were you doing? We was, my whole battalion was on sweep. In other words, we was cleaning up the whole area. Everybody's online. And uh, we just going through, trying to make sure there's no Vietnamese in there. So that day, April the 5th, 1969, uh, when I got hurt, it was 11.30 in the morning. And I guess you want to know how I can remember the exact time. <laughs> I had a watch on, and then when the explosion went off, I tripped a booby trap. And when the explosion went off, my watch stopped. <laughs> so it didn't ever run anymore from, but uh, yeah, 11.30 in the morning. That was the last time I got hurt. The first time wasn't as serious as the second time. First time, they, I lost uh, muscle tissues, have scars, and I went to the rear, and stayed back in the rear. After healing up, they sent me right back to the bush. And that's the second time, that's when uh, I tripped a booby trap myself. And then as the a result, I ended up being a bilateral amputee. I didn't, my legs wasn't blowed off, but they were so dismangled that they had to cut them off. So, uh, so I, this, as a result of being a bilateral amputee, uh, I still was able to do things and continue to do things I like to do in my life. Did you work or go back to school after? Uh, yes. I was discharged September, September 29, 1969. Uh, January 70th, I enrolled in college. Went three years, received my degree. And uh, after that, I started traveling. And I got tired of traveling because I was end up staying broke all the time, spending all my money traveling. So I decided I wanted to go to work. and. Uh, my brother-in-law worked for uh, a company that uh, no helped. So they needed a residential counselor and I had the background for that. I, so I ended up start working at that point. I worked there for about a year and then I switched jobs started as an alcoholic and drug counselor. And from there, I started working with the VA. And I trained as for the chief of prosthetics I served as a chief of prosthetics for about uh, a little over 10 years. And as a result, after I left prosthetics, I ended up working out of the director's office as a patient representative. And in 1997, January the 3rd, I retired. So I had 23 years plus my service time with the VA. And uh, still enjoy it. Did you make any close friendships while you were in the service? I made a lot of close friends. Uh, matter of fact, my buddy that we went in service on the Buddy Buddy Plan, we are very close right to the day. Uh, I have another friend that's in uh, Memphis. We went in service together. Uh, another friend now that's in Alabama. And these are the only three guys that I can remember uh, that we stay in contact. The rest of the guys, I tried to relocate some of them, but it was kind of difficult. So, there again, by not having a full name sometimes, is, you know, who know, can't just call somebody by, you know, by their nickname because nobody really knows them now by their nickname. So, but it was a lot of friends. We make a lot of friends. You, you get to the point that you depend on your friends because if you don't have a friend that, you know, if you've been worried about, you need somebody to protect your back as well as you protect theirs. You don't need to have an enemy on your side and then you got the enemy on the other side as well. Do you attend any reunions? Mm -hmm. Military reunions or mm -hmm. Marine Corps reunions? Mm -hmm. I haven't did. Oh, um, no, I haven't. How has your service and experience affected your life? It made, uh, 
made me feel, in other words, uh, in the Marine Corps they said that uh, they make a few good men and I feel that I was one of the few good men that got as a result of that. Uh, as far as a lot of the friendship, I, I'm the type of person that I'm very outgoing, friendly and don't have a problem as far as, you know, mixing, getting in, into a group or, and in other words, so if I can come into this room and don't know anybody, by the time I leave, I know quite a few of the folks in here. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you'd like to add? Well, being a military veteran, uh, I hear a lot of stories, like especially from Vietnam, uh, some things that I say, somebody else might say totally different, but I'm just giving you my opinion, things that happened to me. Uh, I can't speak for somebody else, but a lot of things did happen to me that something like as I said at the beginning that I, I just kind of deleted it from my memory bank. But if I'm in a group and we're talking about the war zone, uh, some of it will come back, but I don't let it bother me to the point that I can't function on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, I feel that as a result of being in the military, being in the Marines and retiring out, uh, I end up being very active with the DAV, uh, which led me to be, at the present time, I'm the state commander for the Department of Illinois. I was the local commander for my local chapter, as well as other positions. Uh, if it wasn't for that, retiring out of and being as a disabled veteran, I wouldn't be in the position I'm in now. Uh, also in school, uh, when I graduated from high school, I didn't have the intention. I didn't want to go to school. Uh, I had an older sister. She was already in college. My parents wanted me to go. I didn't want to go. I just wanted to be like the average kid. First of all, buy your car, get my own car, get my own place. And that happened after service because right after that, that's when I started receiving my letters from Uncle Sam. And I didn't want to go where they wanted me to go, so I enlisted in the U.S. Marine Corps. Well, Tony, thank you for this interview. I'm very honored to be able to do this. I want to thank you for your service. You have done an amazing job, and you have served our country, and I want to be the one that thank you for that. Well, I'm just one person. And we have a lot of veterans that uh, right now that needs uh, help, especially uh, the veterans that's coming back from Iraq and other war zones. We need to be there for them. So anything that I can do to assist in any way, uh, I'm here for them. I also do volunteer for Operation Support Our Troops America, where that we send care packages to the individuals over in the war zone. And we also try to be there when they come back to let them know that they still someone care for them. Thank you. Great.